Okay, folks, you're in for a special treat today, man. I got my friend, Lokeni, and uh, the real cool thing, funny, we talked about a little bit earlier. He and I just met roughly about a month ago, a little bit more than a month ago. And from the get-go, we just hit it off for some reason, you know. Um, and then in the last few days, I got to talk story with him and get to know him a lot better. And this guy got a lot of cool stories, man. So you guys are in for a treat today. So uh, I was just going to be quiet and let my man tell you about himself. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have here on Hawaii Kaika, my brother Lokeni. Go ahead, brother. Please introduce yourself to the, the family out there. <laughs> hey, Gavon, man. Um, I got a chance to watch your podcast, bro, and I really, I really enjoyed your content, bro. And I'm really honored that you asked me to be on here and, yeah, and share my my story and my background. And so, yeah, my name is Lokeni Siuta. Uh, I come from uh, Halava, Hawaii. Uh, that's over there in Aia. Uh, I was born and raised in Halava Housing. Um, I went to school. I went to school at Storefront. Um, it's, it's a school out there in Wahiwa. Uh, I went to Aia High School. I got kicked out every year. So that's why I ended up going to Storefront. So. But um, I got to meet my wife over there at Aia. You know, we was you know, 16 when we started dating, we're still together to this day. So we've been together now for about 26 years. And uh, we have four beautiful girls. Um, man, I'm so grateful for that because, um, man, they, they saved my life, man. My wife and my kids saved my life. You know, I was one of those Kaloya kids growing up in Halava Housing, um, running around with the gangs, man, you know. I was gang banging for a long time, you know, gang banging for, you know, H Mob Kirk gang. I was a member since I was 12 years old. Um, you know, and it's, and it's a funny thing. It's because you, you don't actually join the gangs. You just be kind of come, become it. You know, everybody in the gang, you know, we was, we was all born and raised together. So, you know, we used to just hang out and kick it, you know, and, you know, we used to run around, do Kolohe things, and, and we was labeled, labeled as gang members. But we didn't think of it like that. You know, it was just my brothers, you know, just kind of hanging out and kicking it. And, yeah, we used to get into a lot of stuff growing up. And, you know, getting into a lot of stuff when I was young, I did a lot of criminal activity, you know, selling drugs, gang banging. I got locked up for like two and a half years as a juvie. And uh, it kind of turned things around for me in my life, you know, because uh, I was still together with my wife at the time. It's funny. And uh, she was like, you don't turn it around. I won't leave you. But... So I was like, you know what? And that was it. And that kind of, you know, changed my life around, you know. It's it's crazy how how love can do that to you, you know. But yeah. That's pretty much the gist of my background. And uh, yeah, that's about it, brother. Wow. God, talk about an intro, man. Definitely. <laughs> you got my attention. Guarantee you guys watch this and be like, oh, what? What? <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that, that's super cool, man. Um, well, 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 uh, Sorry, if you don't mind sharing your um your ethnic background, what your ethnicity is, too. Yeah, um, I'm Samoan German. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and my dad. My mom is uh, Samoan German. My dad is just Samoan. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. oh, and and then growing up when you were um, when you said you uh, you had that turnaround and your wife taught you and you said you said they saved your life. Like, in, in what other aspects would you say your family saved your life? And you don't mind sharing that? I will be honest, man. You know, I used to run around and do a lot of a lot of bad things when I was growing up. You know, I was involved with a lot of criminal activity. I was involved with a lot of underground criminal activity as well. Um, and, uh, you know, if I didn't have kids, there was no way I was going to turn this thing around. If I didn't have my wife, you know, as as my source of light for me, you know, there was no way I was going to turn the, these things around, you know. Because I'm, I'm being honest, man, I enjoyed that life, man. I enjoyed that lifestyle, you know. And, you know, I didn't really care about things growing up, you know. I just kind of, you know, for me, everything was about the gang, you know. 
I always put the gang first before everything. And I even put the gang before my family, my brothers, man, you know. So that was kind of crazy to look back at that and and have my my brothers forgive me for the things that I did to them, which for me, honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't have forgave them. I wouldn't have forgave them if they'd done that to me. So, and my my wife and my kids, man, uh, my girls, they actually taught me patience. I never had patience. I wasn't a patient man. When I was, you know, I, I was never a, a patient man, you know, especially as a, you know, when I was in the gang, when I wanted something done, it, it has to be like this. We got to get it. We got to do this, you know? So, and I kind of felt like I was running my, my my family like a gang almost, you know what I mean? So my wife was sick of that, you know, she was like, wow, what are you doing, bro? And she's like, bro, I'm going to leave you if you keep this up, you know what I mean? And, bro, and I, and I kind of snapped out of it. I got to snap out of this, man. So she helped me change my ways, you know. She helped me change, change my ways a lot. She was very supportive with whatever I did to try and get away from the gangs, you know, whatever, whether it was with my hobbies or um, just spending time away from them, you know, she would always be supportive of that. So man, I really appreciate her and I thank her a lot for that. You know, I, I, I got to ask you this too, because I, cause I have some friends who were Crips too, and but I, I never heard from them um, how they got out of the gang, because they, they, they're both of them. They, they're not affiliated with them anymore. But, you know, you always see things in the movies, you know, that they're showing the guys want to get out of the gang. They either can't do it or they get like, they got to walk the line and get beaten up. I hear all these kinds of stories about that kind of stuff. How did you get out? How did you get out of there? Is it real easy to just get out? Just stop or what What did you do? To be honest, you know, that's something, you know, the neighborhood is something that, I always gonna hold near and dear to me, but that's something that you're never gonna lose. The neighborhood is, is is part of your life, you know, it's part of your 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 lineage, so to speak, you know. So you really don't get out. But, you know, I grew out of it, so to speak. I grew out of it, you know, I got older now. I got older. Nobody's gonna expect me to go and put 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 in some work for the neighborhood, you know. Nobody's gonna expect that out of me nowadays because they see you, yeah, man, look at this guy. So he's a hard worker, you know what I mean? Taking care of his family, you know. No, nobody's going to expect that, you know. So, But, yeah, you never get out of it. But, you know, my advice to to those that is trying to get out of it is, you know, go to work. Go to work. Stay busy. Keep yourself busy. And, you know, never... You know those ties to those neighborhoods, to your neighborhood that you're from. Right? You're never gonna, you're never gonna not show love to those people, bro. You know what I mean? They, these people you grew up with, you shed blood and tears with these guys. So it's not one of those that you can just walk away from. You know, you gotta respect that, and you gotta, you gotta just continue to show your love. But you gotta show your love other ways now. Be an example. You know, I, I always set the example for the younger, the younger cats in the neighborhood. You know, hey, go out there and go to work. Make your money the legal way nowadays, you know, go to work, you know, and then when you go to work, you know, people see that, you know, they're going to see, you know, man, I want to make, I want to make legal money now. I want, I want to not have, I want to not have to look over my shoulders at night, you know what I mean? Peep out the window. You know, when I was young, man, I got raided from the cops so many times, bro. So I used to, I used to like, that's the reason why I was houseless. I wasn't homeless. I was houseless because, you know, the, Cops was always raiding my house, and my mom said, "Hey, get the hell out of here!" You know, so I wasn't homeless; I was just houseless. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, for those trying to get out of the gang, man, you know, keep yourself occupied, man. Do positive things, man. Go to church, you know, be positive. Uh, set the example for your younger ones in your neighborhood, and you know, and preach good things, man. You know, only good things can come out of that. Thanks for sharing that, bro. So, so now. You know, you turned your life around. What is your um, your your career path now? And what was like your educational background? If you don't mind sharing that, what what were you at now? Bruh, check this out, man. You know, growing up, I 
I always wanted to be a youth counselor. That's something that I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to be a youth gang counselor. Um, you know, because I came from the streets, man. You know, I can talk to these kids because you know I wasn't just I wasn't just walking the walk. I was I wasn't just talking the talk. I was walking the walk. You know what I mean? I, I lived that life. I came from that lifestyle. So you know, they got these professional guys with just certificates telling these guys what to do. Man, I lived that life, man. You know, I, I know what they I know what these guys are dealing with. You know what I mean? So I wanted to help these kids, man. You know, but get out of the ghettos and. And try to better themselves. So that's something that I wanted to do. But I I, I ended up uh, being a corrections officer. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm a corrections officer at Halava Correctional Facility, man. You know, the grace of God, man. I was blessed with that job and uh, and a great opportunity for me to, to share my wisdom with those guys in there, you know, because a lot of those guys that's doing time in there, man, I see a lot of these guys, man, they don't belong in there. You know, some of these guys, man, they, they're just in the wrong place at the right time. And and they're just making bad choices, you know. And and they can still turn it around for them, you know. So I, I like to talk to them. I like to pray for them. You know, some of, some guys I pray for, I mean, I got to pray one eye open, you know what I mean? I don't want to get cracked, you know what I mean? But, but for the most part, man, the guys, are, the guys that's in there, man, they're, they're good guys, you know. Uh, I work with a lot of hardworking working correctional officers that are dedicated to their job, you know, to, uh, for public safety, you know, we get the, we get the bad, end of, we get the bad end of the stick sometimes, you know, but man, it's a tough job. This, this job isn't for everybody, you know, but you know, these guys in there, they're just like people, just like you and me, you know, it just bad backgrounds. And they just, they just need sometimes, just, you know, you'll be surprised. You know, sometimes when I talk to these guys, man, they open up to me. I'm like, man, I feel so bad for these guys, man. I'm like, bro, you, know, you, you can do better than that. You know what I mean? Your, your family, you know, they love you. And a lot of these guys, they have that family support. So, you know, they got to take advantage of that and, you know, just make more positive changes in their life, man. So, but, yeah, I'm a corrections officer. How I have a correctional facility, man. That's another thing that turned my life around, too. You know, when I got the job, you know, I was still a little bit kolohe, you know what I mean? But I wasn't, you know running with the gang anymore, but I was just, you know, still kind of hanging out with some of the homies, you know what I mean? But but this job turned it around for me because, man, I'm from the outside looking in, you know what I mean? Instead of being inside looking out because man, I could have done that route, you know, I could have done that route 10 times over, man. I could have, I should have been one of those guys, but, you know, with like the help of my wife and my family, Got me on the straight and narrow path, man. And I feel like that's one of the successes in my life so far. And more successes to come, I hope. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful to uh, serve as a correctional officer, man. I'll tell you, man, that's a tough job. It's a tough job. I, I'm, I'm sure the the guys that you work with, though, they appreciate you because, and they probably, like you said, they're going to open up to you more just because you've been them You've been in their shoes. You know what it's like. And so I'm sure they probably respect you a lot more than the other ones that may not have lived that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Valuable. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and some of these guys, man, they tease me too. You know, uh, some of my captains, you know, they're like, bro, you know, you was Gula Vale, man. You know, you should have been in here, you know, but I'm glad you changed your life around. And yeah. And then, uh, you know, some of my colleagues that I work with, man, they're great people, man. They're, they're, Man, I tell you, man, these guys are great people bro, that work there in the prison. And, you know, they're dedicated to their jobs. And, you know, a lot of them being dedicated to their jobs, they're dedicated to their family as well. But, yeah, they look at me and they're like, man, they know my background too. Because, you know, I share my background too. And so for them to see the change and to see me over there, you know, some of them, they just laugh, man. So, but, yeah, most of them and a lot of them, you know, a lot of these guys are proud, proud of me, man. And, and along with a lot of my friends that, you know, that, that are out here, you know, they're, they're proud of my career change. But not all of them. You know, not all of them. You know, some of them, they're like, man, you're a cop now. I'm like, man. You're like a sellout or something. Yeah. Exactly. You know, this is my job, man. This is, this is, this is how I eat, man. This is how I feed my kids, bro. You know, I really enjoy my job, you know, and, you know, it's, it's rewarding. 
it can be rewarding, it, man, and, and it sure keep you up at night sometimes, man. It keep you up, you know. I had a lot of sleepless nights with this job, but I'll tell you what, it's a rewarding job, you know. They, you know, to be able to counsel, because man, you wear a lot of hats. You know, you're 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 a corrections officer, you're an authority figure in the prison, but then you're also a counselor. You know what I mean? So you know, a lot of these guys sometimes they need somebody to talk to. You know what I mean? You're a counselor, you're a negotiator, you're all of these guys, man. So it's like, man. It's a tough job, I'm telling you. It's a tough job. It's a tough Have you ever been invited to go talk at the schools or like um I don't know, do like even youth presentations for the church and stuff like that? You ever been asked to, to do those yet? No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, uh, you know, because you know, I re I don't really I don't really share my story, you know. I feel like I mean I want to share this my story more out, you know, now that I'm kinda and I'm I'm past all of that stuff, so I feel like I'm in like, I mean, not smooth sailing, you know, because there's no such thing as smooth sailing. But you know, um, I would love to have, speak to the youth, you know, especially the youth, man. They in these times, in these days, in the day and age now, man, the youth needs a lot of attention. You know what I mean? And you know, sometimes they need salsa, <laughs> but you know, you know, like I would love to. I would love to. Um, and you know, in the church too, uh, Bishop, I always wanted to work with the youth, man, the young men. You know, I always wanted to work with the young men and share my story with those guys too, and then have them, um, you know, witness that, you know, that Heavenly Father's for, here for them, you know what I mean? And wants the best for you, and you keep trying, you can be successful one day, you know. Tell you, bro, once people start watching this video, <laughs> everybody going to be like, oh, we got to invite uh, Brother Siuta for <laughs> talk to the youth conference at this, that, and this, and all these different things, man. Guaranteed. Oh, sheesh. You better watch out. Your email, your your, your Facebook profile going to be swapped. <laughs> man, and, and, and I welcome that. You know, I'll be more than happy to talk to the youth and uh, go out there and talk to the you know, the. Not the YSA, but you know, the, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, I'm all for it. You know, I want to share my message with these these guys that you know, you can go through the ringer and come on at the end successfully. You know, so, but man, I've definitely been through the ringer, man. Been through a whole lot of stuff. Uh, you know, you know. Speaking of that, um, that was actually the next question I was going to ask you. If whatever you feel comfortable sharing, what would you say are some of the challenges you face? In your life and how were you able to overcome them you mentioned something already but is there anything else that you, you've had like difficulty facing and then how were you able to overcome them and be successful if you don't mind sharing that man you know um growing up you know i was i was raised in a foster home you know um i was living in shelters uh, i grew up in a foster home so you know i kind of you know I didn't come from a broken home because my, my parents loved me. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't come from a broken home, but there was a point in my life where it became broken. Uh, my dad, when I was 12 years old, uh, he, uh, it got into an accident and then, uh, he, uh, he became, uh, paralyzed. So he was, you know, paralyzed from neck down. You know, and I think that's, you know, when that happened to him, I feel like that was the turning point in my life where I started to get into a lot of stuff because, you know, I didn't have that father figure to discipline me, to keep me on that straight and narrow path. So, uh, you know, I, I made a lot of bad choices, you know, uh, joining the gang, um, selling drugs. Right? And these are, these are things that I didn't even have to do, you know what I mean? Because I had a home, you know, I just did it because, it, it was something to do, you know, the homies was doing it, so I'm going to do it too, you know what I mean? So it was one of those. But that was one of those things in my life that was, and that was stressful for me, you know. And then, you know, I was locked up for a long time when I was a youth. Um, That was another thing in my life that, man, and when you're locked up as a kid, I'll tell you right now, that feels like forever. <laughs> Two and a half years, that feels like forever. Now, two and a half years goes by like this. So right? when I was locked up for two and a half years, I felt like I was in there for like 20 years, you know what I mean? So, and that was one of those stressful moments too, because you know that there was other gangs in there that wanted to get you too. So 
man, I'm just so I'm just so happy that I'm past all of that. But you know, for me, it was like one of those things where a light bulb just went off in my head, man. It it just it just went off in my head and just said, man, you got to turn things around, you know. So how I became, how I got out of that was I went to work. You know, I was there. I used to work for Aloha Airlines when I graduated from high school, you know. So I, it was funny because my wife put in that application for me. <laughs> she said, hey, she put in an application for me. Then she goes, oh, you went to the job interview. And I got the job. And ever since, ever since that, you know, since 1999, I've always been working. I never have not been working. So, so she is the key factor to my success for me to make it out this far in my life. I, I honestly can tell you that, man. She is my backbone. She is my uh, cornerstone. She is that. She's that one, man. She's the foundation in my home. And I thank her for that, you know. And I tell her that all the time, man. Thank you for saving my life, man, for bearing my kids, to, to being patient with me, to letting me grow as a man, and letting me figure things out, sometimes even the hard way, you know. But I, I'm so grateful for her and her steadfastness in believing in me and nurturing me and taking care of me, man. I, I She is the is my success, man. She is the reason why I am here today, man. I can honestly tell you that. That's it's her. And I love her for that. Don't you don't make me cry, bro, during the interview, bro. <laughs> oh, oh man. You know, I was making nah, myself just... cry. Yeah, well, making myself cry, you know, man. Ah shoot. Oh, no, I mean... <laughs> uh, she's man, she's amazing. She's an amazing woman, man. I'm, yeah. God, God put her in my life for a reason, you know. Yeah. God put her in, the life, in my life for a reason. He got bigger and better things in store for me. So maybe this is something, a uh, start of something, you know, sharing my story and, you know, maybe, okay. maybe we'll see. Well, I, I'm pretty sure it is, man. Like, I, I don't know. Like, uh, when you were talking about your wife, I, I've, I've heard it several times from, from different guys I've talked to, uh, even outside of the show, about how <clears throat> their woman in their life changed their life around, you know, like what well, one of my other classmates from high school, he was inactive in the church for a while. And he just shared with me that, you know, him and his girlfriend were to get a long time. And it was when she wanted to get converted. He said, Oh, I better get my life back together. And then he ended up coming back to church. He ended up being in a bishopric. <laughs> oh, oh wow. man. Yeah. And I, and I know, you know who it is too. I'll, I'll tell you about it later, but, um, and then there's some other fellas the same way. Like I, I feel for me too that because of my wife and my kids, I, I'm doing what I have to do for them, not just for me. Like I know when I was single, I told you about when I had suicidal thoughts. Yeah, I, I, when I was single, I felt like ah, it's just me. If something happens to me, ah, no care because it's just me. But now that I got somebody else, I gotta live and work for now with my wife and my two sons makes a difference yeah because now i gotta live for them too and I, I, in, in a way i kind of feel like you too like they saved me in, in, in a few times when i have those bad thoughts going in my head i know i'm not going to do it but when that stress comes in my mind and i think about them it it helps keep me in check you know and so yeah when you were talking about it i was like that's so true bro just having the opportunity to think about your loved ones and how they need you in their life and thinking about how would it be like if they grew up without a father in their life? Oh man, that just gets yeah. every time, bro. Yeah. Exactly, and you know, I when I was you know when I was younger, you know, I I, I made a couple of those selfish attempts, you know, I, and I call it selfish because, man, you know, you know, they're gonna miss you, you know, when you're gone, you know, you don't think about it at the time, but you know, your family needs you, bro. You know, your family needs you, man. And I was being selfish. I was selfish in my thought. But, you know, I was a selfish man back then also, you know. So, you know, that's, you know, I almost made, I made a couple of those selfish attempts when I was young. You know, I had, I had you know, a couple suicide attempts, man. And one, one of them, well, me and my sister walked in, you know, I had a shotgun in my mouth. You know, she, she came in there and 
took the shotgun out of my hand. And, bro, I was ready to go, man. You know, I was ready to go. And then when I when I look back at that, like, it wasn't, like, I forgot what I was mad about, you know? I forgot what was the whole thing about. But that's the thing, too, you know? I suffered from depression when I was growing up, man. I used to see a lot of therapists, man. I used to take a lot of pills, bro. I think, too, you know, when I seen the therapist, man, they used to prescribe me all these pills, man. That thing was driving me crazy. I felt like the thing was kind of pushing me to do those things, you know what I mean? And I was like, bro, oh, am I going insane? Am I going insane? You know, so I was like, bro, yeah, like, it was it was crazy. But, you know, my wife, man, she was there the whole time, and she stood by me. Which is crazy to think, like, bro, I would have packed up my kids. I would have been like, bro, I'm out of here. But being a supportive wife that she is, man, she, you know, and we, we cried about that for a long time. Cried about that for a long time because, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I still get clouded with those thoughts. But then I know how to overcome those. You know, it's just, it's just background noise to me now. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, that's just part of life, honestly. You know, you can you gonna get depressed. You're gonna get down, you know what I mean? But that's what those those things are just emotions, bro. Those things, bro. Right? You can control your emotion, you can get over it, man. You know, so and that's one of those things that I, I had to learn personally that like, bro, you gotta suppress these emotions and just keep pushing. Cause like you said, Gavon, you know, like your family needs you, man. Your family needs you, man. They're gonna suffer without us. We don't think about it like that because, you know, being as men, you know, that's one of the things, too, though, is pride. You know, our pride get the best of us sometimes, man. We got to let that, we got to put that stuff aside, man. We got to put that pride away and just swallow that pill, man. Take your medicine. Swallow that pill and just push on because, you know, your pride is going to get you in a heap of trouble, man. And and I can testify to that, man. Pride got me into a whole lot of stuff growing up because you know everybody wants to be the big man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put put your pride aside, man. Put your pride aside, man. I, if if I have one advice for for the youth, man, it's one, of, and that's definitely it, man. Put your pride aside and look at the bigger picture in your life. Man. You know, there's there's other avenues to doing things, man. And put your pride aside because. It's going to get you in a whole lot of trouble. Sure got me into a whole lot of trouble. Put your pride aside, boys. Put your pride aside. Thanks for sharing all that stuff, Lokeni, because I, I know a lot of that. those things are super personal. And the whole thing you said about pride, yeah. <laughs> My, um, You know, I, I, I don't know if I told you, but so when I, I saw a ther two different therapists in my life, one when, back in 2014 and one... Um, in about 2021, 20, I saw a therapist during COVID. And it was interesting because she had told me that in Hawaii, uh, ha Hawaii has one of the highest cases of mental illness per capita. Like for the amount of people that live here, there's choke, high percentage of people with mental illness. And she was saying one part of it is that in Polynesian culture, because of that pride, she, she brought that up, what you said, you know, especially with the men, you're not supposed to show that kind of weakness. And then with Asian culture, when you have those kind of issues, they want to sweep it under the rug and they don't want to show that uh, outwardly. They got to save face. And Polynesian culture and Asian culture is huge over here in the islands, man. So for those reasons, she said, that's why a lot of us don't express that, you know. Um, <laughs> My son just walked in. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. You know, and, you know, the pressures, man. There's a lot of pressure. You know, because, you know, the cost of living is so high in Hawaii, too. But I'm not saying that that's yeah. causing a lot of mental illness, but that causes a lot of pressure on a lot of the residents. Oh, heck yeah. And like you said, you know, the Asian culture, you know, a lot of them, you know, they, they're they stressed out because, you know, they, they push for their kids to be successful, you know. So, yeah, I don't know what success looks like in their eyes. But for me, my, my success is just having my family and my kids that want to be around me, you know. Me, that looks like success, you know. So, man, I just, yeah. But yeah, when I when I seen the therapist, man, I, I used to see the ther I saw the therapist now when I was like two thousand and nine, I think. And that little after that, you know, I I have that was when I had my suicide attempt, you know, and, and back then in two thousand and nine, and then then uh, 
shit, even more recent than that. I mean, like 2000, and I think it was like 18 when my sister was down here. You know, that's that was the one, you know, my sister pulled out that shotgun out of my mouth, you know, and said, what the hell are you doing, you know? My sister, she's so tough. My sister, man, she's tough, man. I tell you, my little sister, man, she's, and she, you know, she's also a corrections officer too. She's a corrections officer too over there in Oklahoma, man. I tell you, man, she's a tough little cookie, man. She, I see her, I see her beat down some guys, you know what I mean? So she probably wanted to beat me up, you know what I mean? She probably could have, you know, so, but, you know, shout out to her, man. I love you, Lils, man. I love you, man. You're my favorite, you're my favorite. I love you. Well, yeah, shout out to her, man. Saving, saving my life too. She's crazy, but yeah, I mean, I think for the most part, man, seeing a therapist, man, you know, first thing they want to do is diagnose you and then they want to shove pills down your throat, bro. Yeah, they're pushing that pills real fast, man. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see no reason for it, you know, especially as a kid, bro. A lot of these kids, bro, you know, in my situation, they don't need those things, bro. They just need somebody to talk to them, bro, you know, because... You know, they can't speak up for themselves, especially in a Polynesian home, because you know what? We're going to get sasa for opening our mouth. So, you know, a lot of these kids, they just need somebody to listen to them, you know? And I encourage you parents out there, man, like, just talk to your kids, man. You know, they just need somebody to talk to, bro. especially those, like, you know, in school, college, you know, it's, it, it can be stressful for them, man. It is stressful for them. So a lot of these kids, you know, when I was growing up, I couldn't talk to my dad, like, about stuff like that, you know what I mean? I'll get Shut your mouth and just, you know, catch on one left hand or something, you know. So, like, man, I encourage you parents, man, out there, you know, just talk to your kids, man. I mean, and I'm so fortunate that I have that relationship with my girls, man. Like, we can just, we can just talk about things, man, you know, like all kinds of stuff that's going on in their lives, man. And I appreciate that, that they can come to me and ask me that. I need help with this, you know, I'm, I'm stressing about this. And I'm like, man. Don't even stress about it, man. It ain't going to kill you stressing about it. You know what I mean? I mean, you stressing about it is going to kill you. But it ain't going to kill you. Don't stress about it. And that's one thing. Man, it's funny. My mom, my mom, she's crazy too. So my mom told me one day, and I was stressing about bills, man. And my mom, she's so far up. She goes, son, you pay your bills? I go, mom, I don't want money for paying my bills. She goes, is paying your, is not paying your bills going to kill you? I go, no. She goes, well, why are you worried? <laughs> oh, that's why you get bad credit. <laughs> you told your mom that. You told no, your mom no, that. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. That's when all the peep, peep, you know. But, you know, and, and I took that with me. But, you know, I always pay my bills, you know. I always, but. But that's one of those things that was stressing me out that that nowadays, man, I just laugh about it, man. If I don't pay, I don't pay them late. You know what I mean? Just yeah. if it, it ain't gonna kill you, man. You know, you know, it ain't gonna kill you, man. So. Yeah. No, it, but, but my dad gave me the same advice, just with different words. <laughs> <laughs> my dad told me, um, my dad told me, just all you gotta do is make sure you take care of your tithing and your rent. Those are the two vital things. You take care of your tithing and your rent. The other stuff you can figure out because if you get roof over your head, you pay Heavenly Father, you know, you know, Heavenly Father gonna, gonna bless you, but you get a roof over your head, you can figure out the electricity, you get time for figure out the phone bill and all that kind of stuff. You figure that stuff out, but keep that roof over your head. And I remember that. So I made when I was single at one point, actually I never told this story to anybody except for my dad. But at one point when I was single, um, I didn't want to rely on my dad for help. And this was actually when I was back in Hawaii and I was kind of strapped for money. And so I was like, kind of like, um, you know, just trying to do whatever I could to, 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 you know, stay afloat. And, uh, I remember I, I, what well, my dad told me. And so even though I was strapped, I paid my tithing, I paid my rent. And then sure enough, long story short, a couple, one, two weeks later, you know, I was able to get a full-time job after that and everything worked out. So never, wow. ne never, you know, Never deviated from that, man, ever since then. <laughs> Good advice. advice, man. Wise words from a wise man. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, man, I love your dad, bro. I love your dad. When I see him in church, man, I, I, I love to see him in church because he, he he lightens me up, too. 
and and to see you know like your you and your dad's relationship, bro, it's so touching because man, you can see that you genuinely love your dad, and I see that, and I can feel that, bro. I, when I when I went with you guys, man, I can just feel you guys' spirit, like man, you just genuinely love your dad, bro. And I can see that, bro. It's so absolute, man. It's so genuine, bro. I love that, and I love to see you guys like that, you know. You know, that's funny because, you know, my dad used to take me to church too, like that. And man, I'd give anything to to have that again, you know. My rest in peace. My dad passed away a few years ago. And you know, I I I give anything to to have that. You know, and I see you guys, man, it's just so awesome, man. It just brings a big smile to my face, man. And I love that, man. About you guys, man. You guys are just awesome. I love him too. <laughs> Um, you know, and th honestly, bro, I'm I'm so positive your dad is looking down at you, proud of you, bro, of how you turned your life around. Probably proud of the fact. Shoot, your dad was probably the one that told me to tell you to do this video, bro. <laughs> Could be, man. He probably was the one nudging me and be like, "Hey, go interview my son," <laughs> because he realizes all the changes you made, all the successes you've been able to do, and whatnot, and. um See how you turn your life around. You know, I I remember for a while, I, I told you about this already. When when my mom died, bro, it, it kind of messed me up. And I was, you know, thinking about just like leaving church stuff. And it wasn't until, it wasn't until my, uh, I think I got married and I had my first son when I started getting more sensitive to like spiritual stuff. And I actually felt like I could feel my mom. Because before then, I always felt like, my family members could always, you know, feel her. Like, oh yeah, you know, I can feel mom's spirit. I was like, I was like, bro, I can't feel her. What she don't love me. That's why she left me. You know, I would I would say crap like that, you know. And um, and then my wife told me one time, she goes, like, you know what? I bet you your mom's been around you all this time. And you just, you know, you just didn't know because she was around you all the time. Right. Um, I never thought about it that way. And so, like, I, I I'm pretty sure your dad is around you all the time now. And, and that's the other thing, because now you got a guardian angel over you, right? No. Yeah. Fuck, they're around you all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. And, bro, <clears throat> and man, you know, from time to time, I need that guardian angel. And I know he's up there watching over me, man, for real. Um, I, I send him my dreams, man. I send him my dreams all the time. He comes over to visit me. And, you know, and I think it's because, man, you know, you know, when you're doing the right things, man, you're inviting the spirit over to your home. And my house, my house now is very inviting of the spirit. You know, because we're super active in the church. Well, uh, I'm the now I'm the just serve specialist in our in our church. You know, so and my wife, you know, I'm so you know I'm just so proud of these guys. My family, my wife is the first counselor in the the young women's. <clears throat> my daughter is um. You know, teacher for the young women's and my youngest daughter is the YSA representative for our stake, you know, and I'm like, man, I'm so proud of these guys. And I'm so proud and I'm, I'm so thankful for them because man, let me tell you one thing, man. I was we was inactive for a long time before we moved over here. You know, uh, we're from Halama side, but you know, we just recently moved over to um in the Awailimu world, you know, we, we we live here now in Papakulea, and I love it over here. It's so beautiful. The people here is it's just wonderful people, man. And, um, you know, we was inactive for many of years, man. Many, many, many of years, but, you know, and when I'm being inactive, man, I, I always have the spirit, you know, tugging away at my heart, man. The spirit has always been tugging away at my heart. And the kids, too. The kids, too, man. They, 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 they needed that, you know. They, they can feel the spirit, man. They're so in tune with the spirit, so. You know, we moved over here <clears throat> just the beginning of the pandemic. And then, you know, we was like, the kids was like, Dad, we got to go to church. And I told me, yeah, yeah, don't worry, we'll go to church. And my, my daughter would do that every week, bro. Every Sunday, Dad, we're going to church today. I go, oh, what time church starts? I don't know, but are we going to go? Like, Man. And that uh, <clears throat> took a toll on me, bro. Every Sunday, bro, she would do that to me. She would, every Sunday, she would tell me, Dad, we got to go to church. 
And then uh, that tug, man, was pulling so strong on her and was pulling at me too, man. So we got up, we got ready, we came to church, man. And then when we came to the ward, bro, we was welcomed by the missionaries and then the members of the church, man. They were so welcoming to us, man. You know, it's just, it felt like we never left, bro. And the man, I, I, I felt the spirit so strong. That ever since that, man, I I made the the choice, man. We're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna be active, man. I wanna be I want to be active, you know. I wanna be active, you know. And you know, and at the time, you know, I was deal I was still dealing with alcoholism in my life, man. I, mean, I tell you, man, I was an alcoholic for many years since I was a kid. That was something that something that we did as kids, but then as we got older, it was something we did after work, you know, to kind of and then, man, I found it where, man, I needed the drink, bro. And then um, I got sober because of our bishop, our bishop currently. I used to go meet up with Bishop. He used to call me into his office, and I used to sit with him. And, man, I used to, I used to, that was my thing. That was, that was my, my vice was alcohol, you know. So he tells me, take the sacrament. I need you to take the sacrament, you know. You can beat this, you know, you, you can get over this, man. So I'm thinking like, man, take the sacrament? Because I didn't feel worthy of taking the sacrament. But the more I understand what he was saying, the more I took the sacrament, the more I didn't want to drink. You know, every week, you know, it was a repentance process, bro. And I understood that now, you know, like every week I, you know, I, I didn't want to drink anymore. Bro, and I just, the well, homies around me was just dying, bro. Everybody around me was dying. It was dying from alcoholism, drug abuse. And that to me was a turning point for me in my life. I want to be sober, man. My family wanted me to be sober. And there was a lot of wasted days, you know, waking up, being all hungover that I could have spent out there with my kids at the beach or doing something, but I'd rather be at home just being hungover. And I wasted a lot of time doing that. So I just quit cold turkey, man. And next week I make 11 months sober, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. So it's it's been a tough road, man. I mean, I'm it's 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 hard, but and I'm doing it, man. I'm doing it with the grace of God and the help of my bishop and my kids, man. My family and my kids, man, they pushed me to to be sober, to have a sober living, man, and I just live life now. I feel like I'm living now. It's crazy. Wow, you shared so much, but I thanks for sharing so much, man. All, the stuff that you've gone through, I can't even imagine <clears throat> having to deal with all that and be where you at right now. It's amazing. The strength that you showed going through all of that is this this. You're gonna to touch a lot of people, bro. With with not just with this video that we're doing, but just you know, from here on out. Because people are gonna see this, people are gonna to talk to you and find out your story, and they're gonna be asking questions. They're gonna they're gonna need your help. Um I I I just know it just by talking to you, man. Um I know you shared a lot of advice for the people out there watching this to for to to end our show. Is there any like last advice you want to give to our fellow Polynesian brothers out there that are watching this video. Is there any kind of other advice you, you want to share with them? Absolutely. My advice to Polynesian men, especially get involved with your kids' lives, man. Be involved with them. Talk to them on a daily basis. Pray with them, bro. And and be open to them. Be open to them because if you can open up to your kids, man, they're going to open up to you. My advice to you is have that open relationship with your children, bro. I'm telling you, that's one of those things that you're never going to regret in life. And I always tell my kids that too. And, and I tell, our relationship is so cool. Like I told me, when I get older, you're going to change daddy's diaper out when I get old. <laughs> they say, absolutely, dad. Bro, if I was asked that question, I'd be like, hell no. But, you know, so my kids, being that we're so tight like that, and, you know, it's 
it's it's rest assured. Uh, I'm rest assured that my diapers are going to be changed during my 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 elder years, if I, so to speak. <laughs> but Listen. yeah, that's my uh, that's my advice, man. Spend time with your kids, focus on them, and and have an open open relationship with your kids, man, and and be genuine about it, man. Don't fake it, man, because they can read you all that stuff. So be genuine with your kids, and, and just have that, and you know. Make it so you're approachable too, you know, because us, us Polynesian men, we can be intimidating, man, you know. But your kids know your soft spot, so you know. Yeah, we do. Just be welcoming when uh when they come to you, man, because man, they they need it. They need the they need an open ear, so to speak. They need to hear you, and you need to hear them. So that's my advice to you, Polynesian men. And with that being said, man, uh, uh Polynesian brothers out there, man, you know, God loves you, man. Welcome the spirit in your home. Bro. Pray every night. Pray in the mornings. Keep that channel with God open. Because, um, man, that's something that I struggle with. But doing that on a consistent basis, man, has helped me keep that channel with Heavenly Father wide open. And he hears me every night and every morning, regardless if he wants to hear me or not. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Um, with that being said, man, in Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, bro, chicken skin, man. <laughs> Seriously, all the stuff you talked about, man, it's like, oh, <laughs> it was it was good, man. I um appreciate you sharing your stories with everybody, man, and with me too. Um, and, and this is a serious thing, man. Serious. If things come up, and you know what I mean by that, call me up. I'm gonna give you my phone number. Yeah, if, you know what I mean. If you need. If you just need somebody to talk to, uh, because I know that kind of stuff is vital, especially nowadays, you know, with us going through challenges and whatnot, just having that 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 line. I mean, I'm sure you got a lot of other friends you can talk story with or whatever, but just letting you know you got another more one more line to talk story with. So just hit me up on my phone, text text, Facebook, whatever. Shoot, I might call you up if I go through stuff. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, bro. And you know, and I welcome that, bro. If you need anything, man. And, I, and I'm serious about that, man. I'm dead serious. If you need anything, bro, so if you just need somebody to talk to, bro, yeah, I'm over, you know. I'm talk story, you know. Go for a drive, go to the beach. Yeah. Okay, talk story, bro. Whatever you need, brother, bro, I'll be there for you, bro. Yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And thank you for that, too. Thank you for letting out that lifeline to me, too, brother. And, you know, my, you never know. You might get that call, too. Like, go on. Bro, Dude. You, wouldn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm serious, man, because I... I know, cause, cause you know, like they always talk about, like how how women they 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 tend to be able to do that more openly. I think us guys need to do that more often. You know, absolutely, absolutely, you know. bro, absolutely, bro. And you know, that's the stigma about us, man. Uh, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, nah, I get him. I know they talk to yeah. him. I get him. Moral of the story, guys: <laughs> lose the pride, lose the pride, man. I tell you, that thing gets you. Yeah, oh, it's good to be prideful, but bro, that pride you know when to use it, bro. You know, and you know when to put it aside. And when you get that feeling, well, yeah, you should probably put it aside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, bro. No, seriously, man, I appreciate it big time, bro. You doing the show. Um, but, but folks, bro, if, if you ever got uh, you know, you know what a channel is, I know you're watching the show right now, host, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, Hit up, but uh, look in over here if you got any questions, man. You hear all his stories and that stuff he's being able to conquer, and he's he's open to help out people or whatnot. Just hit him up, let him know what you're going through, and um, make make, make sure you compensate him for it, though. <laughs> make sure you compensate him for it. The guy's a busy man, <laughs> but shoot, my brother, I appreciate you big time, my man. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. I enjoyed uh, enjoyed my time over here on the show, man. I I really did. Thank you, Kovan, for having me, brother. You too, man. Mahalo. Yeah. Mahalo.